talk to adjusters about you know how they can market themselves you know what other like basic business skills that they're going to need in order to, to really make this this job worth it because i think on its own right it's the work is can be tiring and repetitive and it can it can wear you down um so you have to have yeah you have, to have it structured in such a way that it's going to be worth it while, while that work right Right. So I want to uh, kind of cut to a chase here. And uh, this is uh, definitely an art uh, and, you know, a point you can argue on. Listen, the work kind of at times it work kind of sucks. Right. Yeah. We, we kind of enjoy the work. In the very beginning, when I first started this, I, I, I didn't hate the work. You know, it was exciting. It was new to me. I was I was all in. But um, but listen, if, if the work was really all that great, you know, kids would be wanting to be claims adjusters when, you know, at a young age. And that's just that's just not it. I mean, when you look at the the older people that are, you know, claims adjusters here, I mean, they're, you know, they, they don't seem that happy as a, 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 in general. The ones that are happy are the ones that really made this career into something. OK, um, they're the ones that were successful at it. And. Fortunately slash unfortunately, those are kind of few and far in between, right? What I stress for my students to, to, to be is to be that successful story, is to not be one of these adjusters that have been doing it for 20, 30 years, and now they're just jaded from the industry and, you know, all they want to do is write denials all day because they're <laughs> upset with their life, you know? So to get back to your point, first... You know, when I my my initial thought was when you kind of made that the introduction to the to the question was that you need to understand business. You need to, you know, no sales, no marketing and all this sort of stuff. And if, if you're just watching this now, then it could almost seem a bit too much. But I, I, I want to preface everything by saying that independent insurance adjusting is a great business to get into because it is a fantastic starter business. Okay. There's a lot of things that you don't need to worry about um, when you're first starting out as a independent adjuster. Okay. You, you, you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about, you know, massive payroll. You don't have to do, um, you know, you're not, you, you're not running a bunch of employees. You're likely, you don't need to carry a bunch of different, you know, liability insurance and workers comp insurance, and you need to get an accountant to manage or you, but you don't need all of that. I mean, at the very, very base of it, it's a, it is a, you know, solopreneur, they call it, right? right? It's, it's a very basic business. You're going to do all the legwork yourself. You're going to go out there. Maybe you've got a, a wife or husband or partner, brother, whatever the case is that are going to help out with certain aspects of it. But it is, for the most part, it's going to be a pretty simple job. Okay. You're going to be able to handle all the overhead and it's really not going to be that much. But what's going to separate you from someone that's going to fit in this smaller segment of people that are just, you know, they've got their license and they're trying to figure out what's the next step. They're not making the money that they thought they would. It's, it's a few basic premises. It's understanding that no one is actively looking for you, no matter what. The only exception to that, I guess, is if you're on somebody's roster and they just have and they need somebody and and your name happens to pop up. But and a lot of new addressers are going to, you know, obviously they're going to join a couple of rosters and they're going to think that that's all they need to do. And eventually they're going to get a phone call and they may they may get lucky and they get that phone call. But that's not what I'm about. And that's not the path to success, in my opinion. Yeah. The path to success is pursuing your sales, not waiting for sales to fall on your lap and presenting yourself in a way where these IA firms feel obligated to work with you. They feel as if working with you, they accept that working with you is going to be beneficial to their business. And that's what's going to get them to bring you on board. There's a fine line between getting an opportunity uh, based on luck or chance and that particular client of yours at that time just having absolutely no choice but to bring you on, which is you know what's going to happen during cat events, um, or between that and actually pursuing companies and getting local work right now. The one thing I hate more than anything else is 
adjusters following the advice of other adjusters and joining rosters and then sitting on their ass and waiting right. for a phone call. Yeah. It drives me crazy, Matt. It, it, it drives me crazy. What business would you ever condone just sitting and waiting? It, 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 it's, <laughs> it's madness to me that, that people think that's okay. You know, it's this business, every business survives on sales, every business. Okay. There's no exceptions to that. There's no business that's there that can survive off. No, you know, no sales. I don't care if it's a charity, you still got to bring, bring money in. Right. Yep. So that's your, and so adjusters, and, and this is a big thing. And I've, you know, adjusters get involved in this. They hear about the money and they think that the key to making money is just getting certifications, right? Just getting certifications, getting licenses and, you know, however many states have licenses, 40 something, whatever the actual number is, 37, yeah. I don't know. Like that. Yeah. Um, man, it's just, it's just bad advice. And that's part of the reason why I even started Adjuster University. You know, I had... I was taking all bad advice, you know, although I did real well in my first year, man, I could have probably made twice as much as I actually did once I, if I started actually following advice that was, you know, legit. I was following advice from people that have been adjusting for 10, 15 years thinking, well, that's what you want to do, right? You want to go after, you take advice from the people that have been here the longest. Meanwhile, that 10, 15 years, you don't even in this world. They could have been sitting on a, a one firm's cat roster for 10 years, working two months a year, you know? If you want more content about the business and lifestyle of successful claims adjusters, check out these videos and visit us at adjustertv.com.